morning. Thank you very much indeed. Thank you, Jimmy. Uh, I was very pleased to hear Jimmy uh, tell you again that I'm from England, right? And here's why. I've lost count of the number of people on this trip that have asked me if I'm from Australia. <laughs> <laughs> I don't mind being accused of being from Australia, it's a fantastic place, okay? But just so that we're clear, right, I am from England, I'm not Australian or Kiwi, uh, I'm not from South Africa, okay? <laughs> now, I've always, I always think, right, when, when I'm talking to a crowd that probably doesn't know me very well, sometimes sort of questions come up in people's minds that can stop them listening to what you're saying, because they're sort of busily thinking about other stuff, like where you come from, so I'm glad we've cleared that up. I'd also just like to clear a few other things up as well, okay? Um, so, uh, one is, um, uh, no, I'm not married, okay, <laughs> but, but I, but, no, because you know, you know, these things get in people's heads, okay, so, uh, but I am in a long-term, loving, committed relationship with my girlfriend, Sandra, okay, just so you know, um, um, I'm not too sociopathic, I know I might look that way, but I'm, I'm, I'm all right. The other thing is I'm 46 because some people are obsessed with age and they say, well, how old is he, you know? So I actually qualified as a doctor 22 years ago. I'm 46, okay? And then there'll be some out there that'll be wondering about this. So I'll just tell you, my star sign is Aries. <laughs> okay. Um, now we can get on and do some work. I, do we have these? No? Mm, okay. All right, this is not looking so good. Can you move the duct tape? Oh. Mm. Okay. I don't think it's the cable. Shall I sing while we wait? Has anyone done the karaoke yet? By the way, um, I, I'm sure you're all thinking this yourselves, okay? But Denise did an awesome job, I thought, in the last presentation, okay? <laughs> I, 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 I've got sort of mixed feelings about that. On the one, one hand, it was fantastic, and then I've also got this follow that kind of thing going on in my head. So I feel like I'm going to be trading on my English accent a little bit here. By the way, do you do English accents with that? Okay, because I don't want anyone to miss out on that. I don't do Swedish accents. Okay, fantastic. So I've got my friend here, Becky, is my... Uh... Okay, fantastic. Let's get going. Okay, so let me just tell you a little bit about myself very briefly. I think I mentioned this a moment ago. I qualified as a doctor 22 years ago. My original ambition was to be a surgeon. And in fact, although I'm a bit down on a lot of conventional medicine, I will tell you, I'm still quite a fan of surgery, actually, because it does have some useful things that it can do, I'll just say that, okay. But I sort of got sidetracked into nutrition because of a personal experience that I had where I was struggling with a few health issues of my own and uh, eventually uh, decided uh, after, you know, lots of pints of lager, don't know if you have that here, but anyway, lager and uh, lots of <laughs> kebabs and Kentucky Fried Chicken and pizza that, because uh, I was a famously unhealthy person, in fact, most of my friends that knew me when I was younger just cannot believe the work that I do. They just, just it just does not fit my sort of previous profile with, you know, smoking, drinking, recreational drugs and stuff like that. Anyway, <laughs> so... Um, Anyway, I ended up changing my diet, uh, partly because of meeting an elderly man that made me think about that. Um, and I had a profound change in my health, and then I ended up getting sort of interested in nutrition. And one of the first things that I did, because I had no conception that there was this thing called nutrition, really, because I'd been through medical school, of course, uh, uh, was I started to work in a diet clinic, okay, and the diet clinics are basically where people come to lose weight, and what we did was, you know, give them appetite suppressants and then sort of nod in the direction of changing their diet. I had no idea that there was anything other than this, by the way, at the time. And what I would see is individuals obviously coming, losing weight, and then, you know, coming back a few months later, and that cycle would repeat, and then... Subsequently, I realised a lot of people were doing that and sort of yo-yoing with regard to weight, you know, losing some weight, plateauing at a weight higher than the weight that they very often wanted to be, and then defaulting back to the original diet, putting that weight on, often with a bit more in addition, and then repeating that cycle sort of ad nauseum. Okay? And so over the years, I decided to try and understand what it was that caused that and then what you might do about it. Okay? So really, <clears throat> this book, I've written a few books. This is my last one. This came out in the UK 
um, in January. And you might be thinking, oh, he's here to pun the book. Well, um, I've got some news for you. This isn't even available in the US, right? So I'm not really here to pun the book, but I'm here, if you like, to pun the information. So what I really want to talk about is why people fail so miserably taking that conventional calorie-based approach, okay? And what that basically leads to in our thinking that could work better for people. Now, a lot of what I'm going to share with you is quite scientific. I'm sure you're up for that because what I've noticed talking to you as a group over the last day or two is that you're very clued up. Okay? You're much clued up than most of the audiences that I would normally speak to. Most of the audiences I normally speak to literally walk into the room, fundamentally believe in the calorie principle and everything about it. They believe that margarine is better than butter. They believe that artificial sweeteners are fantastic, blah, blah, blah. Lots of things that I don't really believe and I think are probably not true. Okay? So my job in that situation is to kind of, you know, put the other side to it, okay? And very often we're able to do that. With you, I feel like I'm sort of singing to the choir or whatever we call that expression. Okay, so, but I will cover a fair amount of science that really explains, I think, how people can take control of their health and their weight more, more easily than we're told we're, we're supposed to do it. I'm also going to say that quite a lot of this book and what I'm going to talk about here is based on my clinical experience. So over the last 20 odd years I have literally treated thousands of people and it kind of gives you a perspective on what sort of generally works, what doesn't work so well. And then the other little component here is in my view common sense because to me eating healthy is very intuitive actually. We've just been sort of taught out of that position very often because of factors that Denise just mentioned. Do you know what I mean? Sometimes the information that you get about health and, for example, what we should eat isn't necessarily based on what is best for public health, but on something else beginning with the letter P, which is profit. Yes, I think that has something to do with it. Let's not get too political. We don't need to get bogged down in this, but obviously we need to vaguely bear it in mind. That's how we can reconcile how it can be that there's a yawning gap between what we're told repeatedly and what looks like the truth once you start to look at the science, for example. Okay, so um, I missed that bit that Jimmy was talking about with Jack Cruz being sort of um, uh, taken from the ship, okay, taken from us, so, cru <laughs> so cruelly. But I don't know whether you know, but his talk was, uh, was going to be called Factor X, okay? So um, I thought I would call this presentation Factor Y. <laughs> Uh, why would you even bother to eat, for example, low-carb or paleo or something of that nature? A lot of this presentation is really about that. And what I sort of rail against very often in practice or when I'm speaking is the calorie principle. Okay, okay. now I know you'll be familiar with it. Let's just go through the basics. Um, consuming fewer, fewer calories uh, than we burn leads to weight loss. Okay, So, for example, uh, you know, if you were to be burning about 2,500 calories every day and you only consume 200, okay, then you're going to be in a 500 calorie deficit. If you do that for a week, you've, you're in a total deficit of 3,500 calories and you're going to lose about a pound of fat because there's 3,500 calories in a pound of fat. That's the sort of the conventional wisdom, okay? So in order to eat less, okay, and to get into calorie, in order, sorry, to get into calorie deficit and lose weight, we either eat less, okay, or we exercise more or we do a bit of both, okay? Now, that appears to make sense, doesn't it? It seems logical, it's mathematical, Quite nice, left brained, all good, fantastic. But there's a fundamental problem with the calorie principle. It is what, anyone? It doesn't work, that's exactly what. <laughs> now, how do we know that it doesn't work? We, we know that it doesn't work because there, there are countless people that have applied this principle that will have lost weight in the, in the short term that will have been unable to sustain that for whatever reason. Okay? And that is not only an anecdotal, though that's what we find, people tell us these things, it's actually borne out in the science.